These are my highlights of Catherine Beale's guide on how to find a great therapist from surviving to thriving. This book is not just about finding a good therapist. It is about finding a great therapist, the kind of person who will inspire you, challenge you and change your life. The kind of person who will help you make real progress. If you are just looking for someone to talk to, this book is not for you. Throw a rock and you will find a mediocre counselor who will gladly take your money, go through the emotions of quote unquote listening to you for an hour, week after week and never encourage you to change. And maybe you don't want to change. That's fine. Just put down this book right now because it will only stress you out. There is a common saying among counselors, never work harder than your client. If you put in the time and energy, so will he or she. When you learn something new, at first you have to think about every detail of what you are doing. For example, when I was learning how to drive, I became conscious of every action I took behind the wheel, even verbally reminding myself to do things like check my blind spot when I merge lanes. But now that I am an experienced driver, looking back before merging is automatic. I don't have to think about it. In order to unlearn something, you must reverse the process. You start by bringing your automatic thoughts and actions into awareness again, like you did when you were learning the skill. Then you can consciously decide not to do them anymore. This is why verbalizing your thoughts and feelings is so effective in changing your behavior. Talking converts what is unconscious and automatic into something that is conscious and manual. Empathy is defined as the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. The relationship with your therapist is not supposed to be an emotionally equal one. This is why you are paying them. It is a conversation, but fundamentally the relationship is one-sided. An assertive therapist will speak up and tell you what they see. This is contrary to the movie cliché of the counselor sitting stoically in an armchair, repeating the mantra, and how did that make you feel? They shouldn't be aggressive or tell you how to live your life, but they should be honest and direct. Being able to bring up difficult topics while knowing you won't be attacked, shamed or manipulated builds confidence and self-esteem. You and your therapist both feel welcome to explore any topic in a level-headed way where you both accept responsibility. When choosing a therapist, ask yourself one really basic question. Do I like this person? And are they someone I would like to get to know? This is vital. If you don't like being around a person, they won't be able to help you make any progress. Trust your gut when making this choice. One of the drawbacks of counseling, however, is that it's generally free form. Certain methodologies will give the sessions more structure, but you have to keep yourself on point. Focusing on principles and values are one way to do this. The relationships I had in my life when I was going to therapy weren't what kept me going. What motivated me was imagining the relationships I wanted for my future. My vision of my future is what kept me going through the tough times. I reminded myself often of the long-term gains in order to tolerate short-term discomforts. As you move forward, holding onto your commitment may become difficult. You will feel the initial excitement of starting something new. There will be an intensity, a passion and a zest at first, just as there can be at the beginning of any relationship. But as you continue, the road gets harder. You will start facing difficult things like emotions you've been avoiding. You may even be tempted to bail and continue to live the way you have been, convincing yourself you're doing well enough. And that's an option. Your current habits got you this far. You're still alive, right? However, if you want a better life, the act of persevering, especially when the road gets tough, will be beneficial in itself. It shows that you place higher importance on your personal values than on your current comfort. This will raise your self-esteem. If you violate your personal values, however, your self-esteem will decrease. 
When you evaluate whether the result of a decision will be good for you, ask yourself compared to what? Compared to your personal principles, values and life goals. Passion can be great, but it means little without effort and perseverance. Having shared goals between you and your therapist is one of the biggest predictors of success. Establish baseline goals before you start therapy. This will direct your search for the right person, help you communicate your needs and give you a running start for when you head into your first session. When I talk about establishing goals, I don't mean just thinking about them. Write down your objectives. Guard yourself from the dangers of perfectionism. Planning is wonderful, but do not get so caught up in preparation that you avoid actually starting therapy. Perfectionism is a form of procrastination. Procrastination is pain avoidance. You see something which has the potential to be unpleasant and your mind shifts your attention. However, usually the anticipation is worse than the actual stimulus. It might sound strange, but my first stop in evaluating a profile is the picture. If they don't have a photo, I won't even consider them. Look for a person you are drawn to, someone you could imagine being friends with. Alliance is a predictor of how a therapeutic relationship will go, so find someone you are comfortable with. As you look through profile pictures, scan for self-esteem. You're searching for someone you can learn from, someone who can model healthy behavior. The thought and care you both invest outside of your sessions, in addition to your time together, will be invaluable to the progress you make. Notice I said both. Your therapist should think about you outside of your sessions. You will be able to tell by how much backstory they ask you to catch them up on at the beginning of each session. They should come to your session prepared with questions and observations to explore, and so should you. It's useful for therapists to get feedback on your experiences of them. Counselors are service providers and they should consider it their job to tailor their practice to fit your needs. A good one will want feedback so they can improve their quality. Disagreements or issues between you might take a whole session or several to resolve, but in my experience, getting to a resolution feels incredible and is completely worth the investment of time and money. Feel your feelings. Emotions are neither good nor bad. They are morally neutral. It is never wrong to feel something. As John Gottman so eloquently puts it, all feelings and wishes are acceptable, but not all behavior is acceptable. The act of self-examination can be clouded by personal biases and emotional scar tissue. Self-integration means coming to know these parts so you can choose to operate within objective reality. Professionals who have spent most of their lives in a higher education setting may not have a lot of experience with strong action. Think of the old saying, those who can do, those who can't teach. This is partly why coaches can often be more effective than accredited therapists. Feelings are energy and energy can neither be created nor destroyed. If you try to push a feeling away or label it negative, it doesn't disappear. You are in charge of your self-growth. As Nathaniel Brandon said, no one is coming to save you. Can inexpensive therapists be good? Absolutely. As long as they have most of the qualities I detail in part two, the good therapist, it doesn't matter how fancy their office is. Some therapists intentionally keep their prices low in order to reach anyone who needs help. Others may have a low price because they are new at the job, but their naivete could give them an edge over seasoned counselors. Stay open and receptive to the possibilities at any price. And with that, I conclude uh, my collection of highlights for this book. The book is only 99 cents online as an ebook. And if you're looking for a therapist, then I cannot recommend checking out this book highly enough. So with that, all the best and take care.